A big thank you goes out to Skillshare for sponsoring this week's video. Well, hello, hello everybody. Hope you're all doing well. I uh, I haven't been out uh, making photographs for probably three or four weeks now. Uh, I've been just busy at home doing other stuff and, uh, you know, as always, after coming back from a, an exciting trip, it's hard to get motivated in your, in your local area. And I know what some of you are thinking, well, I wish I lived on Vancouver Island because it's spectacular. Um, that's true in the right conditions but uh, you may have noticed that a lot of my videos tend to be drawn towards either uh, woodland or forest photography and waterfalls and that's because that's what <laughs> that's what Vancouver Island has to offer uh, we do have uh, a really nice uh, coastline and we also have alpine uh, the alpine is a little bit harder to get to and the coastline it can be it can be spectacular in the right conditions uh, but there aren't any kind of big cliffs or uh, magnificent features it's more to do with the light so today I've come out to an area called Avatar Grove which is on the west coast of Vancouver Island uh, Port Renfrew area and this is the area where I do quite a few uh, workshops or have done in the past none this year though <laughs> uh, and this particular tree here I've photographed many, many times. It's a big old western red cedar that has all these gnarly kind of burls at the bottom of it. And uh, as cool as it is, it's really quite hard to, to photograph. It's hard to get something a little bit different. So what I've tried to do is back off a little bit and I just want to get that one big gnarly burl uh, and I've, I've framed it so that it's uh, square, one-to-one. -one. Uh, what I'm trying to do is eliminate everything around it and just have that big old burl. 
Uh, you may have noticed I do have a new camera. Yes, I did go out and purchase a GFX 100. Um, I wasn't actually planning on on buying the camera. I was going to save up for one, but a used one came up that was just too good to pass up, so I nabbed it. Now, unfortunately, uh, when it was sent to me, it's missing the EVF, which I really do need because I just can't use the uh, the rear panel here. It's just too much of a hassle. Keep putting my glasses on. So I'm waiting for, for them to send it out to me. They just neglected to put it in the box. But in the meantime, I'm really happy about, you know, using this camera. And of course, now that they've just had an update where you can actually bring it up to 400 megapixels with a pixel shifting, um, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. The only problem with the pixel shift, I think, I haven't used it yet, is is that I think it's more for studio work because if anything moves in between exposures then you're going to get some uh, some weird things happening. I'm not going to use it on this photograph. This is just trying to get me get the creative juices flowing. Um, there is a little bit of fog moving in and out but not as much as I would like. It kind of tends to stay on the outskirts of the forest because it's quite a thick forest. I'll show you the composition I have and then we'll go from there. All right. All right, I hope that you can see this. So I have it in the square format and you can see how this beautiful, burly, uh, old Western red cedar. And I tried to eliminate as much of the sky as possible. I'm just gonna zoom in here and just make sure that uh, everything is in sharp focus here. Yeah, it looks great. Now you may have noticed that um, I haven't used a polarizer on this and I'll probably take one with a polarizer and then one without. Uh, I kind of like the sheen, it gives it a bit of depth but it might be too much so let's take this shot here. Now this is f11 at 10 seconds so it's a pretty long exposure and then I'll take one with a polarizer. I might have to up the ISO a little bit because we're getting into really long shutter speeds. Um, not that it really matters but I don't know, I want to shorten it a little bit, so I'll go up to maybe ISO 200 or possibly 400. So let's take this shot, and then we'll take one with a polarizer. So I put a polarizer on, and it doesn't really do much. I was hoping that it would get rid of some of this uh, reflections on, on here, but it doesn't do anything. It does get a, rid of some on the side here a little bit. I've upped the ISO to 200, and now I'm at 15 seconds, so... Um, Let's see how that goes. Okay, so let's have a look at that. Oh, that's just awesome. And we have enough depth and everything. All right, I'm going to take a, um, a 4x5 as well. So we'll just go into the menu here. And just go up to 4x3, 5x4. And I'm just going to recompose this. Bring this up just a little bit to about there. And just make sure that the focus is all good. Make sure we don't jump up and down around the camera. And let's see how that turns out. All right, we've taken our shot. Make sure that the focus is good. Looks pretty darn good to me. Nice. It's quite funny. I've been photographing this tree for quite a few years now and I have so many images of the exact same burl. Uh, I, I just have a hard time finding new angles on this tree, but I do really find those gnarly bits just absolutely fascinating. As far as composition goes, I think the square format is okay, but I much prefer the four by five. There's just a little bit more room around the edges, especially on the top section there. And when it came to processing, I quite like the, the sheen on this. It does give it a little bit of depth. I did find the shadows just a bit too dark, so I've opened those up 
and I did a bit of dodging and burning and I also warmed the overall scene up just a little bit. Once again, I'd like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this week's video. If you're at a loss of what to get everyone for Christmas this year, why not consider a subscription to Skillshare? For under $10 a month, you can learn a new skill or perhaps even reignite an old existing passion. Skillshare offers thousands of online courses from marketing to drawing to painting and of course photography. As an example, are you having trouble with productivity? I know I do, so I went on to Skillshare and found Ali Abdal, who shows the skills that you need to know to keep you motivated and ultimately more productive. Sound interesting? I've placed a link in the description down below, and for the first 1,000 click-throughs, a free trial to Skillshare's premium membership. Go check it out. All right, so I've, I've driven down the road a little bit just to see what's uh, in some other areas I've never been to before. Now, about, I don't know, five kilometers from Avatar Grove, there's a, a, a tree called Lonely Dug, which uh, I won't go into details about right now, but basically it's just a massive tree that's been clear cut around it. It's just standing there on its own. But just past that, there's... Um, there's uh, some old growth patches. Uh, there's the Eden Grove, which I've, I've never really explored before. And then I thought I'd drive down the road just a little bit more. And I've come to this really great spot right here. Um, there's a creek in here and it has all these uh, Western red cedars growing right close to the creek. So I think I might be able to get some shots in there. Unfortunately, it's getting kind of late in the day. I think it's around four o'clock. It gets dark at 4.30, quarter to five. So uh, I might have to uh, leave this area for tomorrow. The good news is, is that uh, I, ha I have this spot right here. I could probably just camp right here on the logging road. Uh, I'm not in anybody's way here. And then tomorrow morning, hopefully we'll, we'll get some decent light. But I'm gonna go in there now and see if I can get a couple of shots before it gets too dark. All right, it's, uh, it is too dark in here. I think I've got the ISO of the camera at 12,000 or something. <laughs> so I think this is the highest it'll go. But as you can see, this is an absolutely stunning scene. I love these, uh, these ferns in the foreground. I guess I'll be careful that I don't trump them down. The only thing uh, I wish is that the waterfall was just a little bit higher in the frame. But even without the waterfall, I think this will make a nice shot. We've got the Western Red Cedar. Uh, right here and then we have all the slough growing on this uh, log going over the creek and then of course the uh, the ferns so this will be the first shot I take tomorrow and then over here there's some really beautiful uh, western red cedar they're not massive but they just look really nice I think it's the undergrowth that uh, that really helps when you have this beautiful undergrowth and that's something you won't find in in second growth forest uh, the undergrowth is not quite the same But uh, if I have time tomorrow, maybe I'll go up the creek just a little ways and see if I can find anything up there. So I think that's it for today. Not a very productive day, but uh, hopefully tomorrow we'll get some shots here.
Good morning everybody. It's a pretty uh, wet night last night. Um, just absolutely poured and I wasn't too hopeful. Um, this morning it was a bit wet and then uh, now it's starting to clear up and I'm worried that it's going to clear up too much. There's some really great light looking this way. Um, this is the side that I'm going to photograph but the sun needs to come around but um, I don't want to wait too long because if it's sunny then that's pretty much going to ruin the, uh, the light altogether. There's blue sky up here and some of the hills over here are shrouded in light so um, yeah I better get in there and, and see what I can find and then I might just stick around and wait to see what happens when the light comes around. So at least have some shots rather than nothing. You can see right now the sun's starting to, to uh, shine on my face here. So uh, beautiful, beautiful morning. Of course there's nobody around here so uh, it's not a bad place to be. Get away from the, the crowds of people. Not that there's crowds of people but uh, <laughs> right I better get in there. All right, so the composition that I have, oh, it's gone up a little bit, right, something like about there. I'm not too keen on this white rock there, so I might have to clone that out or just tone it down. But what I really love about this is the green ferns. It's too bad the, the uh, creek wasn't just a little bit higher. But I love the green ferns in the foreground pointing towards the trees and uh, the creek kind of sloping down. And you'll notice that we have these cedars here, this one here, and then we have another tree growing out of another tree. So there's lots of angles in here that I quite like as well. Um, it's just a really pleasant forest scene. But you can see that the hardest part is getting enough depth and also, uh, whoops, getting it so that the, uh, the, the shutter speed is fast enough that it's not, you know, the ferns aren't going to be moving. I mean, ideally, I'd rather just do it all in one shot. And actually, they look pretty good right now. I've also uh, put a polarizer on to cut out on some of that glare on the ferns here. You'll notice if I turn it, Oh, that actually gets rid of them a bit better. It's more this. You can see there's quite a bit of glare there, but actually, when I have the glare on the rear ferns, it kind of matches the front one. So let's um, let's take that one as well. Sometimes, as I've said lots of times before, it's easier to. Um, or it's better to have a little bit of glare in there. Just gives it some depth, I think. That's my personal preference. So there is a little bit of movement in there, but um, I don't know. I think it'll all work out okay. And actually, let's um, let's bring the ISO down. That was at ISO 800. And put a bit more polarization in there. Now as far as focus goes, I'm focusing on um, these ferns back here, right in the kind of third of the frame in. Okay, how are we doing for wind? Okay, there's a little bit of wind. I'm just gonna wait for the wind to die down again and take a few more shots. The, the light isn't too bad. There's a few specular highlights in the background, but overall it's, uh, it's looking pretty good.
Okay, I'm fighting the light a little bit here. There are a few clouds, but uh, the light's getting pretty harsh. So maybe I should just call it quits and uh, go and have some breakfast and hopefully the, the clouds will move in again. In the meantime, I've been taking some photographs of these wonderful cedars here. There's uh, five or six of them kind of all close together. So I'm able to more or less fill the frame with them. And it's a, a really, really nice little scene. The only thing that's a little bit disturbing is the, uh, the, the stick or the big branch that's lying on the ground there. I tried to move it, but there wasn't really much I could do about it. But I, I've just tried to fill the whole frame. It's a vertical four by five. And now and then the light will disappear. So it's not quite as harsh, kind of like now. Yeah, I think it'd be quite a, quite a nice little scene. Actually, there's a, looks like a Douglas fir in the background here. So we have, this is a cedar, and then Western Red Cedars. Uh, that's a Western Red Cedar. And then the one in the very back there is a Douglas fir. They're not massive trees, but uh, they're really attractive looking. Once again, I'd like to thank you for following along on this week's adventure. In the next several months, I'm really hoping to get out to the west coast of Vancouver Island and try and photograph some of these ancient forests. It's really unfortunate, but logging is really ingrained in the culture of British Columbia and Vancouver Island. And even though our governments say that they really want to save old growth forests, I don't think it's in their interest to do so it's pretty much all talk and no action. So I'm really hoping to just get out there, take some photographs of these forests before they are gone and at least have a record of what we did have. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to leave a thumbs up. And if you have a comment or want to support any of the old growth forest organizations like the Ancient Forest Alliance, I highly recommend that you go to their website and find out more about our old growth forests. Mm -hmm.